Hi guys, welcome to Root STEM and welcome to painting this 3D printed avatar. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. Um, if you do con if you do like the content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing when you get to the end of the video. Um, I try and release content like this on a regular basis if I can, and I try and get battle reports out, but it's getting very hit and miss to get battle reports. I seem to be able to record a flurry, and then not a lot. But that's just the nature of the game. Right, in today's video, we're going to be looking at a 3D printed avatar style model that was given to me by a friend of mine. Um, the avatar has actually... The, I was I was going to actually have this and paint it because I thought it was quite ironic that an avatar could be this big. Uh, but now, the new model is coming out and of course the avatar is pretty much this big. Um, it's quite a tall figure. Uh, I'm not quite sure totally on the height, but if I get a mug, it's bigger than the mug. It's head and shoulders above the mug. So that's a pretty, pretty large figurine to be honest. I've done it in a bail tan sort of scheme, so if you want to follow on with that, you can do. Or you can paint it up your own way, it doesn't matter. Um, but I'm going to show you how I managed to get this sort of molten look. You're going to need an airbrush. If not an airbrush, do some heavy dry brushing. You're going to need some contrast paints, and you're going to need a bit of a steady hand. So, let's get to it. So to start with, we have the model sprayed up in Mechanicus Standard Grey. This is going to be our base, our setting off point. Um, I have detached, of course, the backpack, the head. Uh, just to make you aware, the head came off quite easy. But um, I've never had to really, really prise apart um, printed. Um, because, of course, this is a uh, printed model. I've never had to prise apart printed uh, sort of plastic slash resin before. And it kind of shatters. Uh, possibly because it's multiple different layers, but it, it broke apart very, very easily. So the backpack itself is, is quite reassembled. We're going to be sort of getting some Xenophil highlights, mainly spots. So sort of like bits of Xenophil highlight onto what we uh, assume is the molten section. So hopefully from the image you've seen, uh, majority of this is like going to be a white with green. And then, of course, the molten section is going to be nice and white. And then, of course, the hair is going to be more of a grey, more of a smoky grey. Um, but we're going to start by uh, just using some it's Vallejo Air White. Because uh, it's the only white I like to put through my airbrush, if I'm completely honest. Because it's the only one that I seem to get along the most. I'm going to be using a Badger Renegade. Uh, being due to the fact that it's going to be really thin because we need it to be more spot. So... Yeah, we're going to go for a bit of a coverage, but we need it to create that sort of like spot area. So as if it's more going to be higher, it's going to be lighter towards kind of like the points. So the has been applied. I'm now going to thin down some uh, Ufflin Grey. I'm going to try and apply this to the armor panels as best as I possibly can. So I'm going to coat it, but I'm going to try and make sure I leave that edge so I don't touch any of this. So again, I'm just using the badger for this. It's going to be a very, very, yeah, uh, it's going to be a light touch. So, as you can see, it's a little bit, um, sort of, it's still kind of quite grey, um, but, you know, that's a, a little bit, these bits here are kind of a bit darker than some of those bits there. Maybe not on that one, because, of course, I don't know why. Uh, this is the first time of me using a Badger airbrush. Normally, I use cheap airbrushes, and I'll be honest with you. I'm really liking my cheap airbrushes and I'm a bit annoyed by this, but it might just be the style. Um, the head, of course, I have airbrushed the face, tried to airbrush the armor, and then given like a zenithal highlight to as much of the hair as I possibly can. That's more than likely going to be quite a, a like I'm probably going to use a uh, some airbrush uh, contrast, sort of maybe just charge of grey through that and then dry brush it back up again. 
um, just to try and give it that nice smoky white. This particular model, uh, we're now going to look at doing the flames. Now the flames, I am going to use, uh, it's the contrast yellow, so it's Nasdreg. When I find it, so it's my Nasdreg yellow contrast paint. You can either apply it on with a brush, which is probably what I'm going to do. And I'm going to put that into all of the uh, sort of body part areas. And then once that's dried, I'm going to airbrush spots of Blood Angel Red on top of it. So far, so good. We've got the majority of the armor plate still white, which is always a good thing. And of course, the airbrush of the red worked well. I've airbrushed the yellow and the red onto the um, sword. We're going to be doing some more of that later. I've also got the head done. You can see I've used the red and the yellow effectively. I've also gone and airbrushed brisk charger grey into the hair so i'm trying to get it a bit more of a even though the model is going to be white as well i'm also going to have white hair um mainly to try and make it look like it's more like smoke so this is going to be uh hair that is we're going to be dry brushing that up to be honest to make it a, bit, a lot more effective than what it currently is so next step is to get your apothecary white this is a really really good color i've got a little bead in mind to make sure that i can agitate it properly and we're going to paint all of the white panel all of the armor pieces we're going to wash in this now we're going to get some black sort of armored skin now oh, i might be a bit too runny actually right? uh but i'm having some very thin down black and we're going to build this up in layers uh, it might take a little longer than we would like, but it's going to be nice at the end of it. So we're going to build it up. We're going to have a look at the, the way the print is, because of course this is a very sort of like, and if you can see there, that's, that's quite a nice bit of what should effectively be sort of molten rock. And we're going to go over it with the black. And we're going to keep the black thin because we want some of it to show through and then we're going to go back over it again once we've done and then we're just going to build up the black to make sure that we've got a really nice solid color maybe with a little bit of the old feathering in the edges so we've laid up the black i told you this one was going to be nice and simple and we've got that sort of undercast sort of fire with the crust now I am playing built amp, so I'm going to start to add a little bit of green. This is Warpstone Glow. I'm going to add, of course, Fin. Add several layers. I'm going to paint in these. This will be quite bright because it's on a undercoat. Oh, best not to get the uh, underneath. But don't paint, because I'm going to be painting those green as well, but don't paint those just yet. Just paint all the trim that you can see uh, with green. I mean, it will probably look cool with, with a gold, but I am going to try and match it up with my army quite cool, quite nicely. This will probably need two layers, so this is going to be one of the longest parts that you need to do. Stick some music on and just crack on. So I've done one of the green, I've actually just highlighted it as well. I didn't really need to show you that with some more green, just sort of like thin down and just apply in thin layers just to give it a bit of a nice little bit of an edge. Now we're gonna use some Caliban. Okay. Be really, really careful. We're gonna paint, we have to do a couple of layers of course, we're gonna paint the cloth. So there we are, look. I've masked, so we've painted the Caliban green in. I've used some parafilm and some masking. Where have you gone, sir? And camouflage masking put it by MIG uh, because it's really, really good. It's a bit like putting blue tech on there, but it doesn't stick. So I'm going to carefully, I have, I need to bubble that up, but I do actually have some uh, Warpstone Glow ready. 
and let's get to airbrushing. Green's coming through nicely. That. And now we've got some moot green in here and we're just gonna add a bit of the old highlight into the edges. So with the green processed, we're now going to move on to doing these little gems. And what I'm wanting is Retributor Armour. I'm going to give it a gold outlay and I'm going to paint each gem with corn red. Once we've done that, we're going to get an old school favourite, a Grax of Shade. I'm going to wash all the gem in our Grax. So what we're going to do now is paint up the gems now that we've got them gold trim and of course the the red highlighted i put some evil sun scarlet in here with some uh with some of the remaining yeah that one corn red and i've, I've brought it down nicely we've got it nice to a very thin consistency and then we're going to put a couple of layers of this onto the gems making sure of course it's nice and runny and then we're just going to add more red and more red and more red and maybe a hint of orange which we're going to be using fire dragon bright so we've got evil sun scarlet fire dragon bright and we're just going to keep putting that into the gems until we've got our gem effect now we are looking at uh, trying to improve the hair because i think the hair was a bit too light so i've gone and very difficultly um covered it in another layer of griff charger gray what I should have done is airbrushed it uh, with Griff Charger Grey, but while that's drying, we're going to do some dry brushing on that in a moment. While that's drying, we're going to try and do this particular sword. Now, put the backpack on. As you can see, I've got a nice shades of the green going down there. It's looking pretty nice, is this model. And I've got some Fire Dragon Bright, like we used uh, on the gems earlier. And we are just going to dry brush this mainly into the red areas of the sword. Now I'm using just a little bit of the old kitchen roll technique. I'm getting majority of this paint off. I'm hoping that this is gonna not knock the back off. And I'm just gonna do that. Maybe get a little bit on there. And this is a 3D print, so I'm finding it to be a little bit brittle in places. So if you just gotta be patient and make sure that you do a couple of layers at a time and then do the other side. For the other part of the sword, we're gonna be using some flash gates yellow. Again, I'm just gonna be dry brushing this on. Flash gates mine anyway, it seems to be quite heavy and uh, thick, even though it is a layer paint. Bit of a test. And what we're going to do is do the opposite, just kind of concentrate more on the lighter parts of the sword. Just trying to avoid any of those gems that we've done. I'm just going to show you a bit of the hair. I'm not going to tell you how to suck eggs when it comes to sort of the dry brush. But just done the dawn stone followed by administratum gray dry brushing it on top of the gray that we've already the griff charger gray that we've actually put through the hair um, and that's giving it a darker tone it's actually giving it more of a smoke feel which will contrast well with the rest of the figure and there we go here is the figure fully based up and ready to rock and roller roll I'm going to be using this in place of the uh, other avatar. I'll probably actually have two, so if I'm playing a crusade, I can swap between a male and a female one, depending, of course, upon which um, aspect warrior manages to make it to the big time. Well, thank you very much for watching this, guys. Hopefully, this will give you inspiration when you paint your avatars. Like I said, this was a 3D print that was given to me as a gift. Um, mainly just so I could actually paint it up and see what I could do and I've enjoyed it. 
I'm hoping there's some armor panels and such on the avatars because I have not had the opportunity. I'm not high enough or important enough for Games Workshop to send me a model. Um, but if you do fancy uh, sort of painting it all this way, great. Uh, if you do fancy purchasing one of these guys, if you head over to Hobby Workshop, um, the link's in the description below, you can receive up to 25% off three orders. That actually makes it a pretty decent price. Right, thank you very much, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.